Vampire Sister and we're continuing with my sweet vampire candles and this is chapter 14 A Night to Remember A week passed after the incident in Orlando Candace was in the middle of watching basketball game together with Ambrose and Sofita They were not into basketball per se but who could resist the sweet siren that was LeBron James Between him and Wade the Miami Heat was killing it As soon as LeBron showed up it was over Ambrose was more of a Dick Nowinski fan. Currently, they were seeing the playoffs. Candace had a knock on the door. Since nobody seemed inclined to answer it, ever the two old Ambrose got up and opened the door. Outside, there was Horsena with a bunch of luggage. In, with a bunch of luggage. He said to Candace, I left Sidanta. Took you long enough, said Ambrose, laughing. Yeah, about 5,000 years or something. I forget. There's a lot of discrepancies among the archaeologists when my reign supposedly took place, said Aunt Horsena. Oh, you poor guy, come in, come in, said Candace while beckoning Horsena with him. Horsena entered the living room and he looked about for a place to put his things. The apartment has slimmed down a bit ever since Maruto and Marlo and Nani have returned to my resort. Sofita was supposed to have returned as well, but it was basketball season and she wanted to see LeBron do LeBron's things. Hosanna pulled a chair and he sat down to watch the game. He seemed pretty tired. It was then when Candice had a meow. Candice said, your, your bag is meowing. You should do something about that. Hosanna, remembering t bolt got up and opened the, the door of the traveling bag. Hosanna said, do you mind if I put out his litter box? Fine, put it, in, put it inside the second floor bathroom or something. said Candice looking at t bolt with amusement. Tiba was a rather handsome spin cat with a cute black spot on the nose and a hard shaped spot on the back. During the game, Tiba would try to catch the basketball. Candace made a quick record of it and she uploaded it to Ambrose's YouTube. The scene went instantly viral and then Ambrose was finally able to monetize his stupid YouTube page. All thanks to a cat video. After seeing the basketball game, they saw a random movie in Showtime. They had gone on the service again because they wanted to see Dexter and they had heard rumors of a new show called Homeland. The moment they ended up seeing was signed by M. Night Shyamalan. The group saw it with the lights turned out. Just when the aliens was trying to open the front door, a person in the real world was trying to open the door to Candace's apartment. Candace looked about for a blonde object and she found a baseball bat. She heard the figure at the other side of the door walk away. He then started tapping the window of the kitchen, trying to open it again. Candace relaxed when she heard the weirdo walk away. She still kept the bat, however. This time, instead of hearing a rattling, they heard a, the lock being picked. Ambrose and Sophie watched Candace with more amusement, not desiring to interfere. The cat was laughing with his tail swinging left and right. He too was staring at the door as if waiting for something fun to happen. When the door finally opened, it happened to coincide with the part of the moon when Mel Gibson tells his failed brother, Swing away, Meryl, swing away. And swing away, Candice did. When the lights were turned on by Ambrose, Candice was able to see that she had made a number on Sidanta. Like, like she clobbered her with a bat. The moment Horsena saw Sidanta, he ran upstairs to get away from his presence. Sidanta made an effort to enter, but there was something preventing him from coming with him. Candace smiling said, didn't you know? You have to be invited to be allowed to enter a vampire's domicile. I'll be back, said Sidanta departing. This made Candace and Ambrose and Sophia laugh. The way he said it sounded a bit like that Austrian guy whose name is impossible to spell. When Sidanta was gone, Candace said, what an idiot. All he had to do was try a little bit hard and he would have been able to come inside, no problem. I am surprised you even managed that much, Candace, said Sophia. First, this may spell her fit. I mean, like, I can't go a hundred years without improving at least a little, complained Candace. The following week, Sidanta spent his time stuck in the apartment grounds. Horsena could not go outside to the balcony without Sidanta being in the parking lot yelling. Adam eventually came and with Candace's desire to try a different food place, Horsena suggested that they visit Mojitos. Candace found the name of the place quite amusing. Mojito was located near the FIU, near FIU in 8th Street. It tended to operate to a super late hours. Sometimes it even had concerts. It specialized in Cuban cuisine. The interior had low lights and only the high chairs were comfortable. 
the interior was decorated with large Cuban paintings. The party arrived around 10 p.m. at Mojitos. Candace had saved her appetite for dessert. The others had eaten at home before heading out. In order to deal with the problem that was in the Amber had volunteered to act as decoy. He left early in horse and axe chopper bike. Amber had been dying for an excuse to ride the darn thing. The thing came with a sidecar, which Horsen had used to transport his luggage and the cat. Oh yeah. Nine minutes. The swing ride was a customized chopper Haley from the 1970s. It was practically in mint condition. Horsen had built it from scratch. Just as Amber had expected, Sidanta started following after him. With Sidanta out of the way, the girls and Horsen could, uh, could have a pleasant night out. After looking at the menu, the party ordered a bit of food. Sophie delimited herself to fries, pork rolls with onions, and espresso. Candice ordered a chai donate, shrimp and garlic, a grilled shredded chicken breast, served with onion plantain with fries, fried green plantain, torrejas, and torrejas mojitos with ice cream, boñuelos, and three milks. As for her tonight, he ate a salad and a milkshake. He also nibbled at everything that was in Candice's plate. Candace did not even mind because she underestimated the portion the portion size of her order. The menu did not have photos, so Candace had to use an educated guess. The entertainment started around 11 p.m. Candace getting up said to her tonight, want to dance with me a little? Sure, I don't see why not. Tell her tonight getting up. The two others started to dance salsa, and while they danced, they started bantering. The two of them were in full pickup mode. Candace with her red, asymmetrical chiffon homecoming dress, and by now she had stopped dyeing her hair blonde. Only the tips of her black hair had some of the original blonde dye. As for her, Senna, he was putting the blue tux that Maruro had bought him. Due to the get up, some of the folks thought they were part of the entertainment. After a bit, she said, Why do you not dance when we were back in Orlando? I don't like dancing with Sidata, or near him for that matter. He starts getting that dangerous look in his eyes, and when the random stranger rubs up against me, the fish come flying, and then the security guards come, and then more fighting, and then we can never show our face in the club again. Do you know he was banned from practically every men's club in South Florida? If it is not the dancing incident, then it is the flirtation. I am not a child. I can take care of myself, said Horsena. You could have fooled me, said Candace, laughing. Hey, that was an isolated incident, complained Horsena. After dancing a bit, Horsena went to sit down. He was feeling a bit hungry, so he ordered a buñuelo for himself. When he sat in down, Sofita went to dance with Candace. Sofita was sporting a, a simple black strappy straight neck body comb dress. She had recently gotten for herself a fun, short, pixie, pixie cut. You know, like her hair, a pixie cut hairstyle. When Candice started dancing with Sofita, this naturally got them a lot of attention. Those of Sofita's short haircut, the full naturally assumed that she was Candice's mate. This also created the unintended consequence of male folks starting to walk around Horsena. Candice looked at Horsena over the top and she could not see what was it that men found so attracting. Perhaps it had something to do with the dogs or the perfect balance between slimness and muscle. Sofita saw Candace staring at Horsena and she asked, Should we like go help him or something? Nah, he seems to be having fun talking to that dude, said Candace. What a pity, said Candace, Sofita with envy. Candace and Sofita continued to dance. Ever so slowly, they got closer and closer to try to eavesdrop on the conversation. It was hard to make out anything distinct because of the loud sounds of music. When they got close enough, Candace was shocked and disappointed to hear the conversation was in Creole. Moving back a few paces, Candy said, for crying out loud, I was hoping that they would speak in Spanish or English. Sofita, you know the languages. What are they saying? I don't know. I can kind of make out some of this stuff. I study French and I speak it well, but Creole is a different type of language. And Horsena's Creole has a very thick accent to it. I can't tell if he's dry, telling the guy he fought or wants to fuck, or if he's fucked up. You see the problem I'm having, Candice? Explained Sofita. Yeah, I just wish you could have used a better analogy when Candice. Oh, look, Horsena is getting up. The time? You still have five minutes. 
Horsena came and he handed a candy to Sofita that his purse and his wallet. He left the jacket on the table to guard the shear. So Horsena knew from experience that everyone in Florida was an opportunity pickpocket. A couple of minutes passed and then a fellow entered the ba and then a fellow entered the guy's bathroom. Apparently the duo had left the bathroom because two other guys tried to enter and they had to not to be let inside. During the short pause between the song and another, Candy thought she had a bunch of screaming coming from the bathroom. Hmm, said Candy. What is it? asked Sofita. I don't know. Candy gave a sour relief when Horsena and I came out of the bathroom. She came out to Horsena and I to see what was up. He seemed a bit upset. When he saw Candace, he sighed and said, Is everyone in Miami a drug addict? Nah, just about 30% of them. And then you have the serial killers, and the drunkards, and the crazy folk, the cultists, and the predators. The ones who do not have a noticeable vice are the most dangerous because they are probably serial killers. Especially if you see a nice guy with glasses who isn't drinking or touching anyone, said Sofita. Horse on the side and then he said, I think we should go home. Why? It is like only 1.30, said Candace. Yeah, but I stabbed the guy and his friend might be pretty angry with me, said Horse on Yeah, let's go already, said Candace, getting up and paying the tab. After the party from Mojitos, Candace got a death message saying, He knows where you are and how to find you. Sidanta was coming for him for them and it was only a matter of time. Candy was still in a roaming type of mood. She said to Sofita, Let's go to the Mikosuke. We can gamble or something. I don't want to gamble away my money, said Sofita. Who says we gotta spend our money? Let's find some old fight. We hypnotize them and then we take their money and then we gamble using their funds. Said Candy is explaining her plan. That mean Candy, said Sofita. If you go to a casino, you are bound to lose everything sooner or later, said Horsana. Still, have you actually ever been there, Candice? asked Sofita. Yeah, like Candice. This won't be like that time you ordered french fries at, Ma at Melone's Willis, asked Sofita. That place used to be a regular restaurant, said Candice, laughing. I don't get the joke, protested a horse and a. One time Candice went to a restaurant called Melone's in Hialeah. When she asked for french fries, the guy brought her a chic, explained Sofita. Lately feel that all establishments in higher Leon are up to something. Whether it be drugs, money laundering, blackmail, politics, smuggling, cultists, or that other thing. <sighs> I suppose one doesn't make a lot of money through honest labor in this country, white Candace. And the uh, time? Uh, two minutes. There are some things that cannot be held, say horse, and at time passes, but humans are not changed one me one bit. Morals may come and go, but at the end of the day, a fellow does whatever it takes to put food on his table. The conversation carried all the way to the Mikosuke Casino. The place was dark and musty. The only source of color and mirth came from the machines and the gambling table. The most distinct aspect of the establishment was the scent of tobacco. Jeez, Papa wasn't kidding about the smell of wine candies. Maybe we'll get used to it, like we, did, we got used to the landfill, suggested Sofita. And about that, I have been thinking of moving to Homestead or something, said Candice. I lived there in the, a garage once. The houses are nice, but the area has burglary and a gang problem, with a zoo crew running amok, explained Horsena. What was it like living in a garage, asked Sofita. It was like super hot. The owners of the ha house used to turn on the air conditioner when they left, and I could feel my brain melting. And when I started using the pool, they said I was no longer allowed to use it, and I was supposedly breaking the bricks. Either way, I'm like still super spiteful about it. Thankfully, I only had to live there with Sidanta for five years. Sidanta got himself a better job. I don't know. I'm grateful that I have a roof over my head, but I'm also spiteful about the air conditioner thing, said Horsena. You don't have to be grateful for everything, said Sofita. If you're gonna help a fellow, don't do a half-baked job at him. That is the that is at least my ninja way. When I help someone, I do it with both hands open. I don't give one and take with the other. Bye bye.